Good morning. Stand with us as we worship the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Oh, man. Did you know that God is more than able to do anything that you are in need of today? All you got to do is ask. Ask him and believe. Let's worship the Lord. We wait for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Glory like a fire, awakening. You're the reason we're here
you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. Can you just worship him right now? Can you just call on his name right now? Can you just lift up your hands and give him praise? Thank you, Jesus. Put on the garment of praise Thank you, Jesus. today for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. That heaviness will leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, God, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Let the worshipers arise today. Let us give him praise today, O church. Hallelujah. Sing this song with us. Father, I see that you were drawing a line in the sand. I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand so that your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my prayer. This is my plea. Father, I see that you were drawing.
I surrender and all to him I freely I will ever trust him and in his presence day. and in our lives. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, have your way, I pray today, that you would move and minister by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would bring healing, Lord, today. We lift up those that are sick in body. We pray, God, for uh, an 18-month-old Ryland. Lord, we pray that you would touch him. By the power of your Holy Spirit, begin to move and minister Lord, I pray that you would fill that hospital room, that you would bring healing. May his oxygen level go to normal. And Lord, I believe in you just to put your hands upon him and minister complete and total healing. Father, for Jim Gooch, we, we pray that you would minister to him. Fill the hospital room where he is. Thank you, Lord, for the successful surgery. We're believing you to bring healing in his body, Lord, in this hour. For Glenna Penn, continue to minister and touch her and bring healing, Lord, in her. For Anna, God, we're believing you for healing. And Charlie, God, just minister to him in this hour, I pray. For Jason Green, continue to move and minister by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, we're believing you. Have your way. Lord, we're lifting up Donna to you, and we pray, God, that you would move and minister. Lord, we pray that you would bring healing in her body in this hour. We're believing you today. For Larry and Susan, Lord, we're believing you to touch them, bring healing. Lord, I pray that you would guide the doctors and nurses as they minister to them, and we're believing you, Lord, in this hour. Continue to minister healing in Augusta. God, I pray that you would just undergird her and touch her mightily in this hour. 
for Scott. God, I pray that he would just fill that room. May he sense your power and presence. May you strengthen him and move upon him in might and power. God, for, for your will to be accomplished in this hour. I thank you. Because, Lord, we have nowhere else to turn. There is none like you. You have no rival. You have no equal. There is no one else. And Lord, I thank you that you are God and God alone. And I give you praise. Lord, there's nothing else today, nothing else that we desire than to know you, the power of your Holy Spirit. Have your way, oh Lord, today we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
And over the course of this week, as I was kind of thinking about some things and putting together the thoughts and and uh, of the God that we serve, you know, we live in a world that a lot of people talk about God, but who are they talking about? <laughs> Just because some people use a term God, that doesn't mean anything. There are there are. Uh, some places, I know in Greek mythology, you know, they have a God for everything. And Poseidon, the God of the sea, you know, the whole the whole nine whole nine yards. Even when you go in the book of it's, it's talked about even in the Bible when Paul goes into Athens and he's he's talking to them and he said, Look at all these these statues that you've made to the gods, and yet you were so afraid you were going to forget one that you made a statue that says to the unknown God. It's to the unknown God that I want to talk to you about. Because all these other things are not God's. You know, we, we, we talk about it, and we and this, this was even more emphasized to me in the last year or two, that, you know, even, even when we talk about Satan, when we talk about the devil, the devil and God are not equals. They are not on the same plateau. God has no equal. If, if he had an equal, then the outcome of the future would be in doubt. Because it would depend on who got the upper hand. But can I tell you who's got the upper hand? It's not the devil. I, I think about the words that Jesus said when they were trying to get fast on him and they were trying him and they were they were they were accusing him of blasphemy and all of this kind of and and he's looked at it and he says, Don't you realize I have power? To either kill you or set you free. And Jesus said, you have no power over me except what has been granted to you by my Father. And can I tell you something? The devil has no power over us except what has been granted by our Father. Which means our Father is greater than the accuser. Our Father is greater than the attacker. Though the gates of hell comes up against us, they will not prevail because we serve the only true and living God. It's time we have an attitude about who we serve. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is a great and mighty God. Our God is a redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our God is a healer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I am not of the persuasion that everybody and everything is always going to be healed. I believe that there are things that you and I go through in this life, and I don't understand it, and I don't know why we have to go through it. I don't know why you had to go through the cancer battle. I don't know why we have to walk through what we've had to walk through. I don't understand everything, but I do know this, that through it all, his grace has been sufficient to bring us through. So many times, we want God to escape us out of the moment. When God's saying, I want you to trust me through the moment. Have the kind of faith that says, oh, I'm believing for healing. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm healed. Oh, this morning I got up, and there's sometimes in the morning I can't hardly stand up. My back's going, <coughs> hello. And I went, oh, Lord. And it takes me a while sometimes in the morning to get going just because, just because I'm young. In just a few days, I'll be older. But it's just a number. 
That's what people tell me. It's just a number, and I'm going to tell my body it's just a number. No, my body. My mind thinks I'm still 18 and I can climb the highest mountain, but my body's going, you an idiot. <laughs> But my God, <clears throat> you know, when I trust my God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, I may not be as fast as I used to be. I may not be able to, 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 to walk it as long as I used to walk. I may not be able to run like I used to run. You know, I've learned it's not about the sprint. It's about the marathon. Yes. Yes. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish. There's a lot of people that started well, but they faded. Paul even asked the Galatians, what's happened? You started out a blaze of fire, and all of a sudden you quit. What, what, who, who bewitched you to go back on what God set you free from? We have to be like Elisha. Remember when Elisha saw Elisha? Elisha was plowing the fields. And Elisha threw his mantle on him. And he was to follow Elisha. You know what Elisha did? He took the yoke and he burned it. He made a fire and he killed the oxen and he cooked them. He's a man after my own heart. One neat thing to go back to. He didn't put them in the barn and say, well, if this don't work out, I'll come back here. No, there's nothing to go back to, folks. What's behind me ain't worth going back to. The only thing that matters is what's ahead of me. The only thing that matters is what's in this moment. I can't do anything even about yesterday. I sat down last night and um, Denisa laughs at me because I, 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 on our DVR at home, I, I recorded um, Georgia's national championship from last year, not just this year, but last year. And I was sitting there re-watching it, and she's going, who do you think's going to win? I said, I don't know, but I hope, I hope Georgia does. <laughs> 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 Georgia did beat Georgia. You know, that's past. Of course, I didn't get anything out of it. I don't know if y'all did, but nothing happened for me, whether they won or lost. But 2,000 years ago, there was a loss on a cross and blood dripped and touched this earth that washed away my sins. And he was put in a tomb. And on the third day, he came out victorious over death, hell, and the grave, over everything that I will ever have to face, everything that I will ever have to go through. He's already conquered. There is nothing to fear. As Winston Churchill said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Even death. And I, I look, I want to live as long as I can. I, you know, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but you know, I'm like, I kind of like the guy that the preacher comes in and he says, okay, everybody wants to go to heaven. Come on, come on with me. And this one guy just, he kept sitting there and he, the preacher looked at him and he said, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yeah, eventually I thought you was getting up a bus load to go now. I want to go to heaven. Amen. I want to live as long as I can. That's just the natural part of us. Okay? I don't care what's coming. I'm closer to it than I used to be. You know, I remember back in, when we first got married in 77, we were talking and, you know, I was going, well, Social Security won't be there when I get there. And I'm here. Now they're talking about it going away. <laughs> I'm just simply saying life happens. 
Our oldest grandson is a teenager. He'll be 11 this coming, well, March is Easton and uh, April is Brooks. They'll be 11. And I'm, I'm, I'm going, I told Kristen, I said, you got to realize, six years, they're driving. That's a scary thought. <laughs> Quickly, it happens. Look at who we're serving. Okay, life is happening. Life is happening to all of us. Our kids are growing. Our grandkids are growing. Our great-grandkids, for some of us, I don't have great-grandkids yet. I hope I live long enough to see great-grandkids. I hope I live long enough to see great-great-great-grandkids. I hope I... No, no, no. In Exodus, in Exodus 3, 14, when God is speaking to Moses and he's telling him what he's wanting him to do, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me. How do you describe him? When you read the Old Testament, and, and you know there are people who argue that the name Jehovah is God's name. No. no. Jehovah is a man-made word that combines the word that they had for God and the, the term Adonai. And it takes those uh, consonants that are in the name that they had for God and combines the vowels that they had in Adonai that says Jehovah. Yahweh, more the pronunciation. We call him Jehovah. It's Yahweh. But that's, that's, that's not his name. I'm like a little boy who said, I know what God's name is. It's in the Bible. And his dad said, what is it? He said, Jesus told us what his name was. He said, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, Howard be your name. <laughs> I don't think his name is Howard, but I don't know what. You want me to tell you why? There is, according to Jewish tradition, they couldn't even pronounce the consonants of the name of God because it was too sacred and too holy. The God that we, there is no other name. We call him. <coughs> we call him God because that's a generic form, but. But the whole reality is he is the only God. Man have made other gods but they're not equal to. They are not like him. There is none like him. He is the one and only. And the attitude that we got to have and the attitude that we're supposed to have is the realization is we serve God. Not the gods I made, not the things I put as important in my life. It's only one. When I when I read the the gospels, thank you, sir. When I read the gospels, let me let me just make this point before I go to the gospels. Mm, thank you. God said, I am. How else can he describe himself? He always was. He always will be. He is ever existent. I can't even fathom that. His promises never fail. When we are faithless, he is faithful. That's why we need to obey him. Because he doesn't fail. Oh, there have been times in my life when I thought God was going to do this and God didn't do this, he did that. And I'm going, it would have been, let me just see 
I don't see everything and I don't understand everything and there's still things in my life that I don't see and I don't understand and I don't know the reasons and I don't think I ever will because the Bible says that now we see through a glass darkly. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about a faith walk. It's not that I'm always going to understand everything. It's not that I'm always going to know everything. I have faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. And God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. And that all things work together for good. All things, even the bad things. Even the things that the enemy would bring to cause us to stumble or falter or fall or even to try to kill us. God can turn it around and make it as a positive statement and stone in our life. And I hope you don't get upset at me. But when I said that, I, I immediately thought of Linda. Because the walk that she had to walk and going through what she went through. faith in God, and then God has used her to minister to other people who have gone through the same exact thing. Denise and I, hey, I'm, I'm, as I've said, I've been a minister, I've been a pastor. I've been an active pastor since June of 1978. Good Lord. That's 45 years. Will be this June. Can I tell you? I've been with people, I've been with people going through things, and but until we went through the loss of David, and when I say the loss, I know exactly where he's at. He's not lost. Amen. I know where he is. But I miss him every day. And I told people, oh, I know how you listen to me. I know how you feel. I didn't know how to help. Do you walk in that? You can only imagine, and I can promise you. Linda can say the same thing. You say, "Oh well, I've been, I've been, you know, I've had to deal with my oh well, that's a whole different thing than hearing that C word in your life." walk there. And God's used us to minister to people who are walking in the same path that we're walking in. I'm just saying the tragedies of life and though the gates of hell have come against us our God has prevailed. Is prevailing and he will prevail all the way through. The Bible says, He that has begun this good work in you is more than able to bring it to completion. Trust him. Trust him. Real quick, I got a seven point sermon, and I didn't even get to the seven points yet. But I'm going to quickly go through these because I want you to realize who we serve. Jesus said in John 6 35, I am the bread of life. You hungry? Jesus is what you need. Can I tell you there's a knowing in all of our lives that only the bread of life can feel? Amen. There's a hole in all of us. Have, have you ever, have you ever had a, just a we call it in South Georgia a hankering. You ever had a hankering for you know you just you just you've been wanting something for a long time and you just I can't stand and this is obvious I can't stand to have my mind made up of what I'm going to get when we go into a restaurant and then they come to me and say oh we out of that nothing else does it. Nothing else feels it. You can go, okay, I'll take you. And that, no, we're, that, it, it, it just, it's just not as good. We have 
tried to replace the bread of life in our in our lives with all kinds of stuff, but only the bread of life will satisfy. Not only is he the bread of life in John 8, 12, he says, I am the light of the world. <coughs> He's the light. Can we tell you how bright the light is? If you read your Bible, the Bible tells us when we all get to heaven, ooh, there is no need for the sun because he is the light. Can I tell you, I really believe in the Garden of Eden, before the fall, when God would come down and commune with Adam and Eve, they were clothed with light. Their, remember, remember Moses when he went up on the mountain and he, he got the Ten Commandments and he had to cover his face because his face was shining? And I believe that's exactly what Adam and Eve were. They were a reflection of God. And then in the fall, they lost that reflection. See, he is the light. He is what we all are in need of to illuminate our path. His word is a lamp. Yes. Yes. Amen. How do you know how to walk if you don't know what the word says? Right. How are you not going to go on the wrong path if it's not illuminating your path? He is our light. Then he says in John 10 and 9, I am the door. The only one, I'm going to tell you this, is Bible, and this is what I believe. There is only one way to God, and it is through the door of Jesus Christ. Oh, there are others that will try to grow, crawl up. There are others that will try other paths to reach God, but the Bible is very clear there's only one path, and his name is Jesus. He's the door. You go into the Father, you got to go through the door. He's the way. And that's what he tells us in John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He's the good shepherd. We're the sheep of his pasture. He's watching over us. You know, there's a reason that <clears throat> we are compared to sheep. And, and don't anybody get upset at me. But sheep have to be led. They can't be driven. Sometimes they're not the smartest animals. And they have to be taken care of. Well, we have a shepherd who loves us so much that he says, cast your cares on me because I care for you. He's the good shepherd. He gives us what we're in need. The prayer that he taught us to pray, Lord, forgive us as we forgive. Give us our daily bread. Lord, you're our source. I know you may work for whoever, you know who your source is? It's God. Because if he's not your source, you don't even get up this morning. Even though I had trouble standing up, I got up. But if he hadn't given me bread, I wouldn't even have woke up. He's my source. John 11.25 This is a scripture that God gave to Denise and me. In the afternoon that we got to David's house and the EMS were working with him and God just poured this in her heart and she just spoke it several times. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, He's overcome everything that we will face. And every one of us, now listen to me, I'm not trying to discourage anybody this morning, but
But every one of us in this building, unless Jesus comes first, will die. This flesh will lay down one day. But you know what? Otis is alive. Otis is alive. Amen. David is more alive today than he's ever been. Yeah. I can see him. We talk about it often. I can see him at church worshiping the Lord and just, just getting into it. I can only imagine what it's like now to be in the presence of a holy God. And I, I, I'm, I'm, this is not just about this. I don't want you to misunderstand me. It's not. It's about each of us. But you see, I believe that now is a training ground. Now is a preparation. Now is getting ready. And we can't wait to worship God till we get there. We got to start worshiping Him now. Amen. He is life. And he tells us. In John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. There is no other truth. Let me tell you something. You want to know truth? Know God. The Bible says you lack wisdom, ask him. He will give wisdom. Not the worldly wisdom. The wisdom of God. Lord, you're the way, the truth, and the life. In John 15, verses 1 through 5, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in you, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Our attitude is him. Our attitude, he's a, you know what? I'm a branch. If it wasn't for the vine, I wouldn't exist. The vine can exist without this branch. But this branch can't exist without this vine. <clears throat> he is the vine. He is our reason. That, that whole song that we sang this morning, well, you, you're the reason. You're the, re you're, you're the reason we come here this morning. We didn't come here this morning for you to go, see, what's he wearing today? He wears a lot of sweaters there, but today he's got that zip-up thing on. Oh, wow. That's not the reason you came. I hope it's not the reason you came. I'm going to wear something crazy next week. We'll just see. It's not the reason. What do we come for? my source. He is my strength. He is my life. He is my life. <coughs> He's overcome everything that I've ever been through and everything I will ever go through. There's no one like him. I want him. If you leave with any thought this morning, I hope you leave with this thought. I want him. I need him. Not just, not just for blessing. Lord, bless me and my wife, our son, his wife, us four, no more. Amen. But you know what? I 
I've come to realize if God never gives me another blessing, I can spend eternity blessing him for what he's already done in me. As aware of what all he's already given. Everything. I'm thankful. <clears throat> oh. I want you to hear me. <clears throat> I'm thankful that I, nor you, are who people say we are. Amen. We're his. Amen. And he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You abide in me and I'll abide in you. You're mine. You're mine. I've always been, hey, you, you can talk about me. I mean, you know, I, I'm used to that. You start talking about my wife, that's a little different. Start talking about my kids now. <clears throat> We don't fight them. Talk about my grandkids, you just better run. Up. <laughs> I'm thankful. We're not who people think we are. Amen. We are who he knows we are. People can be hard and cruel and mean. But Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I Walk with me. Learn with me. We're, we're in this thing together. It's an attitude of I know who he is and I know I am his and he is mine. Can't take it away. Oh, you can take this life. And you know what that means? You know what that means? Paul said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. You didn't kill me. You set me free. You set me free. Because you see, this body is a is a bondage for the soul. I don't understand. <clears throat> Why it is that God gives all the strength to the young when they don't know what to do with it. And then when you get to where you know what to do with it, you don't have the strength to do it. <laughs> but he's in all wisdom, and I'm still learning. Maybe he knows we kill ourselves. Lisa. We talk about it all the time. She goes, you know, I used to be able to clean up this house all in one day, and now I go, I clean up it. Uh, I got to go sit down for a little while. <laughs> I'm going, well, part of the problem is if you go in one room and clean that room, you get done a lot far, faster than you go in this room and you start. Then you take something in this room and, oh, and then you see something over here. And then you start, oh, and then you go in this, and then you go, and I'm going, oh. We were going to do this. Oh, I, I, I would. You seen that? Yes. That's right. She said, you do it your way, I'll do it my way. You seen that thing on Facebook that says the mind of a man and it has railroad tracks and then the mind of a woman and it's got railroad tracks just going in all different directions. And I'm going, God knows what he's doing. And it's okay. Be you. Be who God wants you to be. But know this. Know who he is. Amen. Yes. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for this opportunity. God, have your way in our hearts and in our lives. Speak into us, Lord, today. God, I pray 
for each and every one of us. I want to thank you for this morning. I want to thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you, Lord, for speaking into each and every one of us. Lord, I just pray that that carries through this day. And the Lord, every person in this building and that are watching with us, that they would have a renewed sense of who you are and how much you love them. And you made them, created them, redeemed them, and are still working on all of us. Lord, have your way in each and every one of us. Go with us this day. May we allow that light to shine forth. May we be reflections of the light of God. Shine it forth through us. May it illuminate our paths as we follow you. We give you praise, glory, and honor for everything to be accomplished. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Hallelujah. God has no equal. He is the light. Thank you, Jesus. That's who we serve. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please remember the events of this week, uh, Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. Join us on Facebook Live as we continue to study God's Word and share some thoughts together on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Our service next Sunday, 10 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. You want to be here and let's give God praise and glory and honor. If you uh, if urge you to continue to support the church, you can go to infusionchurchnc.com. Go to our giving page. You can give your easy tithe. You can text GIVE to 336 777 7674. Or you can mail it to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Or you can bring it with you next Sunday. And give unto the Lord. God is good. On the 18th of February, 9 o'clock, here, man up. 18th of February, 9 o'clock, here, all men up out of high school and up, uh, come and join with us uh, on the 18th of February. Yeah. Yes, we're also doing, a, and I put it out this week, but we're also doing a fundraiser for our building fund. Everything that is raised of profit on this fundraiser goes into our building fund for future expansion. I mean, I've already had people say, well, what are y'all doing? We're getting ready. Yes, amen. Whatever God wants, okay? But well, we're just getting ready. Um, but we're doing a, a Boston butt smoking, cooking uh, fun time. Um, first time we've done this in several years. Um, but we're doing it on April the 7th, which is Friday. You can pick them up on Saturday the 8th here between 10 and 12, is that what we said? Between 10 and 12, you can order them. You can see either me, Andy, or Robert. Uh, you can order them. They're $40 a piece. Uh, they, they will be smoked, cooked to perfection. Best, <clears throat> anyway, it's just the best. So uh, if you'd like that, they're $40. You can order them. You can also... Uh, order it by emailing the church, infusionchurchnc at gmail.com. You can order it that way. Uh, and uh, we'll put you down. And we've already sold 9 or 10. 10, 10, 11, 10 or 11, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so that's coming up. So uh, that'll be in April. Uh, Easter is April the 9th. I think the Sunday before the ninth, which would be April 2nd, wouldn't it? Uh, we're going to have a special day here at the church like we did last year. We're going to do lunch after church and have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. 
and uh, might even do something for the adults. Um, so if you don't want to miss, that's April the 9th. And you say, why are you going ahead and announcing that? I said, it'll be here before we turn around. So uh, that's coming up. <clears throat> so uh, get ready. Amen? Amen? Would you stand with us? Before you leave today, turn to somebody and say, I just want you to know our God is an awesome God. He is so great. He is so magnificent that he brought you into my life so you could take me to lunch today. Lord bless you. We'll see you this week.